Hello and welcome to Art 23 2D Foundations. My name is Bonnie Stipe. I'm the instructor for this course. This first video is to just welcome to you to the class and to just go over the class structure in general. I'm also going to briefly touch on the syllabus and the materials that you will need for the course. So if you made it this far, I'm assuming you already know how to log onto Canvas. Uh, just remember, it's always going to be your before you change your password. Uh, your login is your W number, and it's the first two letters of your last name, the first two letters of your first name, and the last four of your W number. So we're here. This is if once you click on the class. Uh, you will see our home screen first, which you can see right here. It's our 2D foundations. Now, the majority of the course content of the course will actually be found into the module. So I want to click on that next. Now, as you can see, the entire class is visible. The summer class is fully online. And it's also... Uh, asynchronous which means we're never going to be on here at the exact same time you work on things at your own pace and you turn everything in by the due date what's very unique about the structure of this particular summer class is that um, I'm making all the projects available at once so you can see everything at once and the final due date for the course is actually all the same too it's all at the very end of the the, the course now that doesn't mean wait to turn everything in till the last date. Uh, most of the projects or the assignments that you turn in are actually introductory assignments that you're going to turn in and get feedback. That way you can work on your projects and improve them. Uh, but it, it's going to allow a little bit more flexibility in the course as you go through it. You should finish about two projects a week. I'll send some email reminders to you guys about this, but. You want to, on average, have about two projects per week done. Uh, most projects will take about the same amount of time other than the color project. You can imagine that color project can take a whole week in itself. So that's why there's about two projects a week for the five week course. This course is very, uh, has a very fast pace to it because it is only five weeks long. Typically when this class meets in person in the summer, You'd actually meet four days a week for eight hours each day. So that kind of gives you an idea of how many, how much time is going to be required to get this class finished. Um, the other thing uh, you, that you want to think about is uh, you want to budget that time into your schedule itself. Even though you can work on this at midnight to 3 a.m., you have to put in that same amount of time each day. So you want to start off giving yourself a nice... Uh, schedule and th that is built in that way you're not down to the last week and just struggling to get everything done uh, the course will be graded through those assignments turn in and also the quality of work that you turn in so if you're rushing to finish everything that's going to be shown in your grade okay so um, we are going to sort of start at the beginning and the welcome here if you've gotten here you've clicked on the welcome video, you've kind of seen initially what we're going to go over. The uh, What I want to talk about next is the syllabus. So like I said, this class is R23 2D Foundations. Uh, if you need to contact me, you can actually contact me through the inbox in the course itself. That actually sends an email directly to my bstipe at chubocollege.edu email. You can also contact me through the phone number listed. You can also text me through that number um, if it's easier, especially if you have a quick question or if you wanted to send an image or something for me to look at very quickly. Um, you know, if you're texting or calling at weird hours, do not expect a response. Um, but uh, if it's uh, if you have something quick to ask, I'm totally fine with you texting me. Uh, so this course, in general, is an introductory course. So 
the course starts off assuming you've never had an art class before. So I know when we go to do our introductions, some people are art majors. Some people have totally different majors. Maybe you're a nursing student or a Spanish student. Um, so everybody's coming at this from a slightly different beginning. I also take that into account, you know, you're working on your own individual work. Improvement is a part of your grade and also the effort that you put into each one of these projects. Another big aspect of this course is vocabulary. We're learning how to speak about art and about the visual language of art itself. So each of the projects is actually structured around the elements of art. Uh, we'll also talk about some of the vocabulary that surrounds those elements and principles of art. And you do have two tests that are taken online, a midterm and a final. They are open note. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But you can, as you can kind of see, you'll have one halfway through the course and one at the end that go over those vocabulary terms. I'm not going to um, read through all of the course objectives, all those kinds of things, because that's something you can read through on your own and respond with some questions in the discussion or email me if you have any particular questions. Uh, the next part that I want to go over uh, is our materials list. I'm actually going to go through and click and, and show a few examples for you um, right now if you have questions about those. The materials themselves, I'm going to be fairly open-ended. I know we're in a very unique time where there aren't really currently any art stores open that you can physically walk into. Uh, there are art stores that are available for pickup. You can also order online. The class is structured open-ended uh, because uh, if, for example, you're waiting on something like the paints or paper to come, you can put off on uh, doing those projects till the second part of the class if you needed to, till they show up. You can also do all of the beginning um, sketchbook assignments in pencil if you need to. So that way, if you're waiting on something coming in, you can just get started working on the class right away. Um... So, I'm going to go through, like I said, we're going to look at some examples of each of these. The most expensive uh, material that you have to purchase on this list is the acrylic paint set. That's why it's up top. You don't need the acrylic paint set until the um, Control Chaos project. It's one of the later projects on the list. Uh, but I put it up top because it is going to be the most expensive item you have to purchase. So I'm going to go here to the Blick Art Supplies just so you can kind of see some examples of those. For the acrylic paint set, you have to have uh, a minimum of the primary colors plus black and white. Primary colors are red, yellow, blue, white, and black. Most acrylic sets actually come with six, so it also has a green. There's a color theory reason for that because typically Certain colors mix uh, certain ways a little better than others. So even though in theory you only need those three primary to mix every color, typically a blue will either mix a nice purple or a nice green. They, they won't mix both. Uh, so they'll put an additional color in there with that in mind. So um, you want to get a student grade or artist grade acrylic paint set. You don't want to get craft acrylic paints. There isn't really a huge price difference between the two, but there's a huge difference in quality of mixing. So you want to make sure you get one of those. The Some of the cheapest brands, one brand is the Blick Studio Acrylics. That's their student grade acrylic brand. Um, just to click on it to, so you can see. They have a set of six tubes. It's about $25. Um, you're probably going to pay around $20, $25, whichever brand you get. This is Blix um, brand they have. Michaels also, ha uh, Michaels doesn't carry Blick brand, but they do carry uh, Liquitex Basics. I'm going to click on this here. The Liquitex Basics brand. Um, 
there. There's a set of eight here. A set of six are also around $20, $23. Um, I do know Michaels has a, a fairly decent student grade brand called Artist Loft. I've used that before. It's okay to use. That's probably their cheapest one. Um, the, like I said, the kind you don't want to get from Michaels is the kind that are kind of in those little tubes that say acrylic craft paint. Those will not work good. They're, they have bad coverage and they have a lot of binder inside of them so they don't mix together well. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you already have paints at home and you have those primary colors, you don't have to go out and buy an additional acrylic paint. The bookstore also has the kit in stock. They have limited hours right now. They don't have 24 kits available, I think, because they're assuming not as many students will come to campus. If you contact the bookstore, you can go and uh, pick up a kit from there. They have um, order pickups as well. Okay. Uh, short, short handle brushes. I'm going to go to the brushes. Brushes are you, for usually one of the biggest questions I have about what kind of brushes to get for our uses, you can go ahead and get, um, oops, you can go ahead and get the uh, cheapest brushes you want, synthetic or natural hair. Um, you, I would make sure that you have uh, what's called a small round brush. Um, that if you can kind of look here down at the bottom, round brushes are the ones with the little points. And how brushes work, the smaller the number, the smaller the brush size. So a nice little zero brush, round brush, uh, is important to have. You should also have a slightly bigger, like six or eight size flat brush. Um, I know um, Blick itself, they've got a big variety of brushes you can buy actually for fairly cheap. They even have, um, let's see if I can find, they've got these very, they've got a lot of different sets. They even have a cheap big pack of them that'll work out that are synthetic grade. You can find, probably find a fairly decent pack of brushes for five to $8. If you have some at home, you can feel free to use those as well. A uh, pad of Bristol smooth paper, 14 by 17 is the size. Uh, it's specific because there's, there are some specific instructions on how to create a border, and that's based off of that 14 by 17 size. Most of our drawings are going to be 9 by 12, um, especially with what's going on right now. If you can't find that specific size paper, I'm not going to take off points, but it, it does make it a little bit easier in understanding the directions if you have that size paper. Um, the Bristol paper itself is a heavyweight paper. You have to make sure you get um, the smooth kind because the bumpy kind will not work with the pen that we're using. You have to have smooth Bristol. This particular pen... I'm just going to show you Blick because it's fairly cheap. Michael's also has smooth bristle like a Kansan. It's usually around $13 for 15 pages. 15 pages should be plenty. You'll probably use about 11 pieces of the smooth uh, bristle. If you can see here, the smooth 14 by 17 is $10 at Blick. Also with Blick, if you're a student, uh, they do give you a student discount. So you always mention that if you go to Blick. Um, they usually give you about 20% off, so it makes it a little bit cheaper. Uh, but like I said, uh, I would expect to pay 10 to $15 for the Bristol itself. You need to have some kind of felt tip pen. Uh, in some of the projects, it refers to it as a pit pen. Um, the pens themselves, the kind that comes in the kit is the Tomboy uh, pen. I'm going to click on this here really quick. And it, it's nice because it has two different brush sizes and it has a smaller side and a, 
uh, brush side so you can kind of get a big variety. It's about two, three dollars for that pen. Or you could get a set of Micron pens that has varying sizes. As you kind of see here, the size depends on the number. The smaller the number, it works like decimal points. So it goes kind of opposite in a way. Uh, the smaller the number, the smaller the nib. So uh, if you have a for example, a 05 is larger than an 005. That's the biggest difference between the two. And then we have uh, black cardstock or construction paper. I'm not going to click on that. Uh, you can use pretty much any black paper you can get your hands on. Cardstock is going to be a little bit easier to cut for a negative space project, but if you can only find construction paper, that's okay too. Um, glue I have on here. If you buy the kit, you're going to need to get, uh, the kit comes with a very nice, um, it's called, uh, I'm going to click on it. It's called, a. Uh, Uh, a matte medium style that is like a painted glue that you put on. If you only have some kind of stick glue or something else at home, this will be fine for this project. Um, you could use either one. A paint palette, you could go buy a paint palette or you could also use um, to mix on a white ceramic plate or a paper, white paper plate. White is the ideal color for color mixing because Something colored underneath can actually distort the color itself. You could also use uh, white wax paper. That also works very well for a paint palette. Blue tape. Uh, blue tape is basically painter's tape. We, we're going to use it for our borders and help us create some edges in our painting project. The nice thing about blue tape is that... Um, it actually removes very easily from the paper. You can also use masking tape if you can't get your hands on any blue tape, but it occasionally rips the paper. You're going to find blue tape from around, it'll be around 5 or $6. You can actually find it almost at any store. Just to kind of click on what the blue, blue tape looks like. The other tools you need are pencils. We're not going to, you don't have to go out and get any fancy artist pencils. You can use a number two pencil. We're basically going to be using it for under drawings. If you have an artist pencil set, an HB pencil, which is kind of in the middle, is nice to use for the under drawings. You always, just as a reminder, we'll talk about it later, but you always want to draw very lightly in your under drawings because we'll be completely erasing them when we uh, go over top of them with pen. Water container for your paints, rags, paper towels. You will need a ruler or a straight edge. 18 inches is ideal because of the size we're working with. But if you have a 12 inch, it will actually work for some of the 9 by 12s that we're, we're making. But 18 inch is ideal. And a sketch pad or notepad for notes. You're gonna not you're gonna turn in your sketchbook digitally, so you don't actually have to physically turn the sketchbook into me. Uh, if you can't get your hands on a sketchbook and you keep a nice three-ring binder or notebook with uh, your paper in it, that's okay too. The one thing that's important is that the paper you're using for your sketchbook has to have no lines. Don't do it in a lined notebook. It has to be nice, clean, white paper. The lines become distracting when you're trying to think about or look at your compositions. All right, so like I said, there's... Uh, few different places you can get it from. If you have questions, feel free uh, to email me uh, if you have any specific questions about the materials or the course outline in general. All right, so like I said, you're going to start off in your modules, working through each one of those uh, projects. If you're waiting for your materials to come, you can always start at the beginning of a project uh, and work your way through until you don't have the material that you have because most of them start off with some thumbnail sketches so you could start on project one start working through it until you need your pen if you have to go buy one and then start on project two and keep working through it until you need your pen so there's a variety of approaches you could do if you're waiting for materials for the summer class itself 
All right. Well, I will let you guys move on to the next thing. And it's nice to get started with all you guys this summer.